Hi everyone, it's Bruins here and welcome back to the channel and today we are playing some more Evil Dead the game. Now the games I have for you today are all about decision making. So basically I've, I'm quite happy with where I am with the demon at the moment. I think my playstyle has actually improved a lot over the last few weeks. So I just want to go a little bit over my thought process and just to show you guys as well how the build some is important but what's more important is decision making. If you have the winning build and you're making poor decisions during game you will lose. So it's just making those assessments, see where everybody is on the map, and then just making the decisions of where you're gonna go. You're gonna go after the one, after the second. So I've got three gameplays for you. In some of the teams, you can see that some of the survivors are not great, but the last team that we face, it was actually the better one, and they did make us run around a little bit more. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, drop me a like and a comment for the algorithm, and then subscribe, and I will see you all in a second. Okay, so first game, again, just having to decide where to go, thought they were by the castle. It's a bit unfortunate this map that the two points were right next to each other. I've been in the situation before in this map and uh, it's a little bit crap because they can literally run from one point to the other, even whilst they're doing points, so they can easily just take turns there. And if someone's struggling on one point, the other one can just run towards it. It can be very quick for them to take both points. As usual, just strap everything I see in my way. So I just want to try and level up as much as I can. It turns out they weren't by the castle. I went. I ended up going all the way down to the cemetery. They weren't there and they were actually just on top of me where I was before. And this happened a few times before, but um, yeah, it's just, uh, you don't think that's what the RNG is gonna do, but it does. And she's alone. So I know she's a target. An easy target and this is not what you want to see survivors doing well they'll do it and you know it's um, it's to the demon's advantage really it's a bit it's a bit of bad play really just got a knife can't go very far with that knife really just gonna try and heal i would just keep the pressure and she's not trying to heal she probably knows she can't and now Arthur is right around the corner, so we're just gonna wait. And you can see that my Inferno energy is super high. And I haven't spawned any units, I've just taken a unit that was on the floor. And I think that's crucial, really, for Puppeteer's games. It's just making use of the units that are on the floor. And then also, as I attack, I gain some Inferno energy. So my Inferno energy is almost always on the max, as you can see. It's just crazy, really. You never run out. And this Arthur, he kind of knew how to fight. So he was using his dodges quite well. The thing is this, with any survivor that's 1v1 the demon, soon enough, they just, they just lose soon enough because the AI gets involved or whatever. And that was that for Arthur. So it's all about decision making, guys. You find a survivor that is alone, go for them. And then hopefully by the time, I'm just dropping everything around them. Hopefully by the time the other survivor has come to try and rescue the first survivor, you've already killed the first one and then you can 1v1 the second survivor. And now I think Henry is coming here. Again, I'm gonna 1v1 him. And Scott is right at the back there. He's driving as well, so I can see the car is coming. Oh, and I actually, that was a mistake. I was trying to possess my unit. So I'm just gonna drop him right on top of the trap there, just to keep things going, keep him busy. Now he popped his ability, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna avoid him if I can. And now I'll attack him, because his ability has run out. So I feel some Harrys, they panic. Oh, Scotty's here now. I feel some Harrys, they panic, and then they just pop their abilities. And it's a bit of a waste, if you ask me. Now I thought here I could kill him from um, possession damage and Scotty was right next to me, he didn't do anything. Yeah, he was almost dead but not quite. And then when you are in this position, you are in a strong position here when you've downed one or two survivors and then the other one's running for the res. The trick is obviously try to avoid the resurrection at all costs. But I don't know if I... I think, I think I managed to get him just on the last minute here. <laughs> His animation had finished there, but he didn't bring them back. But that was unlucky, really. Yeah. And then Harry dived to the AI. 
So I think this was a this was actually a really quick match. But you say they were all isolated. I know they were randoms. You know this. What, two PC players and two PlayStation players. You always expect they'll know better, they won't split up like they did. So, that was that. Okay, second match, they have two hunters, one warrior, and one uh, support, shadow. So again, we're just gonna do exactly the same thing. We just keep collecting energy, and then we're gonna trap everything we see in our way. It doesn't really matter. If they're gonna go through it or not. So in the old maps, they can't be close to the, to the points, as you guys know, and they can't be close to the demons, so you just wanna travel to a place where they possibly are. And then in less than a minute, we find them at Painter Manor. They're all together, so you can assume, I, I already assume, maybe, they know what they're doing. I haven't seen an Amanda for a long time. So I'm just gonna chop everything around it because I want a unit to just pop out so I can possess it straight away and I don't have to spawn any basics. He's doing the right thing. He wants to run, go to the car, and that's what they all should be doing right now. So he's trying to calm them. <laughs> so I'm just put some units down and I'm gonna, I, I, tr I was trying to get the car to flip, but I was, I was just being too quick about it. So it was never gonna happen. And they're kind of split into teams here already, as you can see. It's a Kelly and the Warrior, and then the Cheryl and the Amanda. And now it's decision making, guys. Who do you go for? Do you go for the support and the Hunter, or do you go for the Warrior and the Hunter? And I personally find the war a Warrior and a Hunter, they can cover for each other really well. So they were not my choice. So I went to the supports and to the Hunter, because if I could possess Amanda, I could potentially kill Cheryl. So I was, I'm looking for a unit running around, and there we found it. Okay, nice dodge. And actually the Kelly has come this way as well. So she's not far. And the Amanda, she's not dodging much, which makes me think she's the weaker player. Look, she's just taking a lot of damage, which is unnecessary. She can dodge all of those, but she's not. So these three, they can be, you know, they can be a nuisance, these three. Two hunters and a support. So here the decision making wa was, do I stick to these three or do I go after the lone wolf? And here making some noise that just remind me that that's what I probably should do. So I just feel there's a survivor who's alone. They, they really can't do much against a good demon. If you know how to dodge, if you know how to take your time and just watch how they move and just put a little bit of pressure, they, they, I, I don't think they have a chance. So the ladies are doing the map pieces and then this fella is alone. So I knew it was a risk that they would complete the map pieces whilst I would be trying to take him down and I knew he could make me waste my time. He could be going through the windows here, that's what I was worried he was gonna do, but he didn't do that. But anyway, I just thought I trapped these windows just in case. So it's all about decision making. He fell into my trap, so he didn't escape that. But you see, he's not running off. He should be jumping through that window. And the thing with this um, Warrior Ash, he will dismember you quite quickly if you're not careful. So I was just trying to dodge as much as I could. Yeah, he was just trying to pressure me, but it's uh, there was no dodge on his side. He was just trying to really, really push, and I think he was just uh, he just made some bad decisions there. So now we got one down. We got some points there from him. Well, from he, he's bleeding at the moment, and he's gonna die, and then we're gonna get some more points, and then we can get the boss out. I just go back now after the hunters and the support. And the puppeteer is the best boss, in my opinion. You can stay alive as the puppeteer for longer than with any other boss, and you can really bully the survivors. And there they are, staying together. They are, they were good, you know? Together they were good. Uh, well, maybe I'll retract that. I don't know why she was not shooting at me. So here I knew the Cheryl was going to be a problem with all the heals. But then, you know, the Hunters just shooting you from the distance as well. They do make your life hard. But now we had the AoE attack to 
Kelly was is right down with the energy with her health, but then you see Sherry just heals everyone. And that's the problem really with this team comp. Just gonna keep putting pressure, trying to waste her time. I know the Amanda is the weaker one of them. She just misused a lot of her dodges there. And here actually, I didn't see that one of them had gone ahead to start the dagger. And it was the Kelly, I think. So good play. They've got the right mindset. We just wanna trap all of this a little bit. So ideally, the objective is to prevent them from taking these points because otherwise Ash will come back. There she is, she's gone down. Now we just want to prevent them from picking her up. And she's out of bullets. Which is actually good for me. Not right now, but later. Yeah, and this Sherry, you know, she, she kind of knew what she was doing. She was being a good support. Now I got demonic dash, so I can delay this a little bit more. Yeah, she's gonna die. So they're doing well, kind of. They are, you know, dodging enough. And I'm making a few mistakes. I'm not sure why she used her ability there, because she should get me out of possession, so I think she should just try and fight as much as she can and in the meantime they're wasting the resources I mean they could be using that exploit of the infinite colas and all that but we always hope they won't so that's not what we wanted but it's fine <laughs> one thing on my advantage was that Ash disconnected this happens all the time they don't they don't have faith on their teams it's quite demoralizing really. So now they could have been full team. The story could have been different here. Now the decision was stay on point and just strap the whole thing out or go after them and bully them. And I think I decided to go after them, but not before putting some traps down because they always come this way, like through this little tunnel. So I'm just going after them. And then I see that they're driving. And that's when I think, oh, okay, let's go back and let's just strap the hell out of that place because they're just gonna come straight here. I'm just trying to have a look because sometimes they will stop along the way to just grab some supplies, I guess. But no, they're coming straight here. I just strap all of this as much as I can. And, and then something funny happens, or actually really good for me. They come into this little tunnel and I just wait here a little bit, but they come into this little tunnel. And this is a death trap. If you guys, if you survivors come into this, this could be a real death trap. Especially if you puppeteer. Because you just do some heavy attacks like this, and they will all take damage because there's nowhere to run. And Amanda's out of ammo. So now. All we need to do is prevent them from taking Kelly up. And luckily the AI did the job there for me. Sorry, that's It's delicious. And that was it. Shara was down. And once Shara was down, Amanda went down. That turn is a death trap. And then the third game we had in a row was again on the same uh, map. I know a lot of people say that this map favors a demon. Yeah, it does, I guess, because you can find the humans so quickly. The humans. So what's the team here? They have one support, one leader, a hunter and a warrior. Quite mixed. You know I've been facing some really strong leader ashes. I don't know what's happened there because I know he was trash. I don't know if some people are finding some good builds with him finally. But I think it's, it's down to play style as well. You know people talk about builds and you know this is the best build, that's the best build. I think you just need to be good at decision making more than builds if you can make good decisions you can win the game and a lot of the time people just panic or they they just waste their dodges and then you know you can have the best build possible if you don't know how to play or you don't have good decision making then you're gonna lose they're all here together and there she goes alone so that's where we're going
They, they always do that. One always splits out, and it's Kelly. And Kelly can be a nuisance, but sometimes they can't, so we'll see. So I'm gonna let her get the map piece, and I'm just gonna trap everything around her. And she actually takes her time there. And this was the RNG again. I bet when Kelly took that map, the next map piece spawned right next to the others, and then they just took it, and that was that, really. All right, she's coming out now. She's gonna fall into a trap in a second. Right, and she just killed that one super quick. So I just I just decided to spawn some units here. Just to really see what she's made of. And she uses her ability straight away. And you know, yeah. I guess that's what you wanna do. You wanna you wanna use her ability and just keep dodging as much as you can, but then she ran out of stamina there completely. And now you can see that her teammates are coming towards her, which makes me think these are a little bit better, these survivors. Yeah, and I just kind of misjudged how far she was or how close she was. And I'll tell you what it is, is that torch. That torch really confuses me. I, I, can't, I can't judge the distance at times. Yeah, and then they full heal. She full heal because of Cheryl. And all, all of them are here. When they're playing like this, it, it is difficult to do anything or to do what you want. But then, you know, they split up again. You just want to try and take advantage of that. Yeah, here we just run out of energy, unfortunately. And they're staying fairly close to each other. Ash, if Warrior Ash again is a little bit further away. I don't know what the, what is it with the Warrior Ashes. And here's when I decided Kelly's not very good because I thought she took too much damage there. Oh, here's that flashlight again, just confusing me. See this Kelly? I really wasn't sure about her. And I mean, this is the best place really for you to depossess as a demon because look at, her. <laughs> look at this tree. Now here's the mistake. Cheryl went off on her own. And here's what I thought, hmm, she's an easy target. She's just killing a unit there, so there was nothing, no unit for me to take. And I can hear another unit around, but I can't see them, so I'm just waiting for them to come through because I don't want to spawn anything. Yeah, she's not bad. Is she gonna get into a car? Yeah, she did a good job there. It's exactly what you what you want to do as a survivor. You just want to run. You just want to get into a car and just move away. And this was a little bit wacky. And it was unlucky for her because then I was just blocking her way. And there was nothing she can do here. That was just a mistake. She probably panicked there. And this is it. When they panic, that's when you're gonna get them. And I she kept trying to heal. And then in the end, she, <laughs> she did because I ran out of energy. So annoying. So we just want to keep the pressure on the shower as much as possible. Because we almost downed her before. It was just really because of not having enough Inferno energy. Yeah. And we just keep in the pressure. Now here was a decision, do we stay and bully her or do we go to point, to defend points? I think the right decision here was to go to point because if they take the points then they are further into the objectives and this is where you want to stop. You could always kill them later but you want to stop them progressing. So I decided to just leave Cheryl even though she was completely alone there and pursue the other survivors to try and stop them from doing points. And she's just chilling here. We just try to bully her a little bit. And we're just waiting for her ability to, to run out. And there it is. And Sherry is just behind us. I'm assuming Sherry might be busy with some units as well. Right. And then she went down. And now here was another decision. Do I continue? bullying Cheryl 
or do I go to point? Because now they've started points. And I I just make this very quick decision of just try and see what Shadow is made of. And she's not a bad survivor. She knows how to play. She knows she's got good dodges and she's got good timing. Even though I can still hit her a little bit here and there. I just think this is going to take too long. And by the time I get to points, they would have probably taken it. So right here, I decide to just leave her. And I know she's going to rest Kelly and I don't really care. I want to get them off point because I don't want them to progress with the objectives. Well, right, here they are just chilling. Not much going on. So we just drop a few traps here, and then we get the boss out. And now let's just put as much pressure as we can on them. And at this point, this leader Ash is quite low, so I think he is the one that I need to focus on. Yeah, he just tries to face me here. And now that's a big mistake the other Ash did. He's off point. So, and that's what you don't want to do. If you are the single survivor there because one of your teammates has gone down, try and stay on point as much as you can. But he died anyway, so even if he had stayed on point, it wouldn't have worked. And you can see here, guys, I'm just upgrading basics boss and possession and infernal energy i'm not even going for elites now here i'm thinking those two ladies they're probably going to go for the dagger so i start to make my way down slightly and here i see they're actually coming up they might go for the res so i just make my way back there to page points and then i'm just going to trap everything again that's going to give me some points that's going to ensure that they get a little bit busy if they if they do get here early and they are they just start to run around look at that mob of <laughs> of dadites <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what happened there i don't know why there were so many there so maybe she's panicking a little bit that's why she put that healing point there because that will do nothing for her at this point i just want to avoid her to heal and that was it now, if this Kelly was amazing, she probably could have done something about it. But she wasn't really. Now we just move into her just to really finish this. So out of all the games you've guys seen, this was probably the better team. Because they made me run around a little bit more. But still, it's all about decision making. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop me a like and a comment for the algorithm. And subscribe. And I will see you all next time.